Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we are gonna do a little bit of detective work on the 34 coupe that we got out of Michigan called Beautiful, a little old lady, five window coupe. Uh, we are going to try and dig into that car a little bit. I know there's some other cars that are kind of ahead of it for like seniority on the list of projects, but this car is pretty darn close to being a drivable car if we can get the engine broke free, get the brakes all adjusted, and just kind of go over the mechanics of it. We could actually make this car a drivable car without a lot of work if we have a little bit of luck on our side. So what we're gonna work on in this video is trying to get the engine broke free, get it to spin over with a, with a battery like the starter and the starter switch, and also get it up on the lift and just see what the underside looks like. I wanna make sure that this thing is as clean underneath as it looks on top and inside the car, and then we can kind of figure out where we're gonna put it in the list of projects, or are we gonna just get right on it, get it running and driving, and show you guys uh, what it looks like on the road again in a couple of videos. So kind of another discovery video, but it should be a fun one, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to try and get this thing to turn over. I know Brian, the owner of this stuff, said he had been putting oil in the cylinders over the years and trying to keep the engine free, but I don't know how long since he last turned it over. So we got the car in third gear. We're going to start by trying to rock it and go from there and see if the fan... What I usually look for is to see if the fan's starting to turn, and then as that works, when we rock the car, if the crank turns, uh, then we know we're good. So start rocking it. Move it up. Oh, there it goes. I can hear compression. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's rocking. Cool. All right, we'll try and get the hand crank and turn it over, pull the plugs out, check all that, and then maybe put some fuel down the carburetor. Let's see. Tell you what, look at the plug. It doesn't look too terrible from the last time I was running. No. Oh, that was ridiculously easy. <laughs> I hate when they're too tight by hand. <laughs> Yep. Too, too loose, or uh, whatever. Too tight by hand, too loose for the watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's turning over. It's just the belt's staying still. Alright, I gotta stop. Yeah, let's lift that plug. Well, it turned. It turned the whole revolution though. It's just the belt so loose it was slipping on the crank. I saw the crank turn. Whole deal. It's turning it. It's just geared so well. Probably it's not the same as first. I had third. Oh, you had third. Yeah, so oh. so it pushy. Power in neutral. Yeah, I had it in third, so it wasn't okay, so hard. Yeah. It's like your palm star. Oh, 
You got nothing. Alright, so we got the car up in the air and we can see that uh, this car was very well maintained. Um, I think she was definitely taking it to get it serviced every 1,500 or 3,000 miles and they just kept greasing and, <laughs> greasing and greasing and greasing and greasing and now it's become petrified. Oh my god. Oh, don't step in that. Yeah, so we're, number one, we gotta just knock some of this craziness off and I'm sure the car will get really clean so <laughs> that, Mike was like why are you putting gloves on <laughs> this is why so we're gonna need to knock all this off here but everything is like the, the great thing about that grease and oil is it preserved everything even with it sitting in an old barn anything that was coated in that which is basically everything <laughs> and you know and of course it's a flathead so it was leaking oil everywhere all the time and so. he was also putting oil in the cylinders yeah he was uh, the great thing was the owner that we purchased all this from he this car in particular he was oiling the cylinders like regularly so when we loaded this on the trailer the oil with pan was so overfilled that it was like just dumping out the rear main seal and like out this factory weep hole that they put in the bell housing from ford with a little um Potter pin. Potter pin and some grass on there, hay. Oh, there you go, look. Mm -hmm. And there's some drippage. Some, there's some drippage. So it was like way over full. Um, so that's not good. <laughs> oh, now I just created a mess. So anyways, um, so yeah, all that stuff looks really good. I mean, the wheels all like turn okay. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of corrosion on the drums. <laughs> there might be a little oil on those shoes too. Yeah. Watch oh, the great. drippage. Uh, yeah, let me get an oil. That's going. I just opened up a. Yeah, that thing is. That thing is dripping very rapidly. Oh, now it's now it's totally running. Really? Oh yeah. Holy crap. Okay, here we go. Now the camera guy's got dirty fingers. Come on. All right, so yeah, we gotta. Don't touch that anymore. Stop! Stop touching it. Okay, so. Um, we need to pull the oil pan. So in the last couple of shots you saw, we were able to get the engine broken free, um, and we, you know, rocked it. We knew that everybody was screaming while we were rocking it. Again, the original, the owner we bought it from has been filling the cylinders for years with oil. So he already did that job for us. So we rocked the car back and forth, got it to break free pretty easy, and then we used a battery, a spare battery, and hit the starter switch, got it to crank. We have no spark. So Mike recently got a engine for uh, a someday project and somebody had like redone the whole distributor and put a, a new coil on it and plug wires and a bunch of stuff and he wants to change to something more exotic hot rod ish so me being the antique car restoration guy i am now <laughs> just one car yes um i needed that distributor so he pulled it off we're going to put that on here just because it is so hard to mess with the points on the original one. So at least for now, we can throw this known, good, working, running, you know, came off a running engine one on here and get the car to run. That'll be good. And then the other one, I can clean up and get it working and then put it back on eventually. But for now, we can just kind of bolt that on, which will be nice. So we're gonna work on taking that off. I ordered an oil pan gasket so we can drop the oil pan down. The rest of the car is like, that's about the most of the rust is in probably the original muffler. Oh, this one's filled with- uh... Mousy goodness. Yes. So it sounds like we need to give this thing a straight exhaust job. So I'm sure that will shoot out some great stuff when we go to clean That's it. That's pretty packed. We might want to cut that off before, oh my God. before we go to start it. It's yeah. packed. It is packed full. Great. So I might swirl it in there, which is better than inside the car. Yes. Um, probably still the original exhaust for sure. Um, so yeah, we may be able to just make a little connector piece and put that in there. And, uh, but yeah, everything on the back side is pretty good, uh, except I just noticed this. There's no rear shock? This shock is missing, <laughs> and there's a piece of petrified rope holding the wire, holding the shock arm. So I'm wondering if that shock uh, seized up. There's still one on this side. So I'm wondering if that shock seized up and they just like 
took it off. It looks it's like it's still there. It is still there, but it is. Uh, it probably Dude, those have to be a bear to change. Oh, they're not too bad. Yeah, they're, they're in here on the inside yeah. of the frame. So, anyways, that is the only thing I've noticed so far. Rear uh, spring is also well, yeah, lubricated. I don't know if the soil, if the uh, gas tank is savable or not. If it's been sitting with fuel in it all these years, it's probably gonna be really hard to clean it out. We have some spares that we got with all of that stuff, like nice originals that were cleaned out and everything. So worst case, we may swap this just to sit, save some hassle. Get that probably, swapped out. Probably but, not a bad idea. Um, all this looks really good. The fenders, all the stuff. I mean, just peeling paint and really greasy and oily. So. Um, we're gonna work on getting the oil pan removed, get it cleaned out, make sure everything's good, clean out the screen and the oil pump because we do not want to get this thing running and it has like clogged oil screen. We have zero oil pressure and we wrecked the engine and starting it and running it. So trying to be proactive and do some of this stuff. So we're gonna have to drop the pan. We'll get the old distributor out. We'll see where we're getting. We're waiting on some parts. So hopefully before the end of the video, we get the parts we need and we can maybe try and start it. If not, we'll save that for another video. So let's get to work. Good. Damn it. Does that look? Yeah. I think that'll catch it. Yeah. I doubt it's. Well, let me just make sure. Right. Yes, we're good. How much leaked out at it over the years? Well, I think it's full because I think he kept filling the cylinders. Oh, right. Yeah, he was I'm adding. I'm sure the oil is like tar after um, yeah. all these years. Could prove me wrong. There could be so much. Oh, oil. yeah. Yeah, I think he was pouring like ATF or, or who knows what. Just right. Like, it's oil colored. Yeah, it's very runny. Yes, it is. You kind of half block in the hole. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't want it to <laughs> shoot across the floor. Yeah, right. It's going to be a fountain. There's plenty in there. It's very viscous. Yeah, it is. Definitely not all motor oil. No, that's... I'm sure he was pouring... He could have been pouring kerosene or something down at the right. cylinders. I don't smell. I don't smell kerosene. I but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he was. Yeah, what he was pouring. But yeah, it's, it's thinner than regular oil. Very runny. We have to get some of our our uh, diaper pads from <laughs> from Jim Snow that comes and donates them. Jim's one of our viewers. Super nice guy. That hot rodder that. Stops by and donates some of them. We use around the shop, so I don't have to find some of them, but you can see just how runny it is. There we go. Still think it's. Yeah, because it's still dripping out of the rear seal. Well, there's probably more in there, but. Yeah. I don't know. It can't shoot that far. You think? You want me to go for it? Yeah, give it a try. All right, here it goes. Stand clear. <laughs> go ahead. No, you're right. Ah, there we go. Woo. Got a little on your arm, but no problem with that. Struck gold. There's definitely Plenty. I think that may have been a bit overfull, yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> I knew it when I pulled it on the trailer, and as soon as it even like got on the trailer, it was just like leaking out everywhere. You're right. As soon as you jostle it around yeah. a little bit, yeah. And it actually stopped for a while because there was like there was like hay. Yeah, up in the bottom. I saw. I, I thought someone made a plug for it or something. Yeah, it was like grass or something. Yeah, that's pretty watery. So I'm glad we didn't really try and start it any further. So we're looking at the oil plug after Steve pulled it out. It looks like, my gloves already died. It looks like this plug is not in very good shape. So we might need to steal a plug from another oil pan. But yeah, that's, I don't know if it corroded away. Or if somebody did something. I mean, was it, it was tight, right? Yeah, oh yeah, it was tight, yeah. It wasn't leaking. The, the plug wasn't leaking. It was the only thing on the car not leaking. <laughs> don't nice. talk about beautiful like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, there, I don't know what's going on. There is a little bit of junk in this, in there, but we're gonna keep this aside. I think it's just messed up plug, but maybe somebody will tell us that's a one year only yeah. 
34 plug. I don't want to throw anything away. So, but yeah, I mean, we can always throw it back in if it was for now, but try and find a better one. We're just about to put the plug back in and we notice that there is a like chunk or something living in that, oh God. That might be the other part of the oil plug <laughs> that, that's disintegrated in the bottom of there. I have a feeling that might be what it is, I don't know. But we're gonna throw the plug back in just so we can turn the fan on because it's super hot here today. And we're gonna drop the pan the rest of the way. We got all that kerosene oil, whatever's in there out. Servicing our It'd be probably pretty fun to get some simple green and oh. power wash the other side of this thing. Oh. Yeah. I got the crazy, I have this crazy nozzle that yeah. like will cleans my brick. Oh, we'll take anything. I tip the original paint off this thing. Oh boy. But uh, I just don't know if I want the shop covered in. There it is. I don't know if I want the shop covered in water. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, we blast everything, everything. This is full of trans fluid. Oh, there's other stuff in there. I thought there was, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess that valve, there was, a, there was an exhaust valve open for sure. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling like it's gonna smoke a little bit when we start it. Mm. We're gonna have to go back up and then bring it. Oh, it's over the cross member yet. Is it, is it? I think it's the, that boy. I think it'll slip past. Or you have to drop. You have to drop the wishbone. Drop the wishbone to the starter. I was hoping you could. It might drop a little bit. All right. It won't like. Okay. Oh, there we go. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> just, it's not a crazy. Just amount. enough. Look at that. That's just basically the tension on the spring. Yeah. For the caster. That's down. did it. Woohoo! All right. Cool. All right, so we got the pan down, and uh, there is some not good stuff in here. It's like, yeah. This is why we dropped the pan, because literally, we have like, it's, it's just turned into grease. I mean, it's just solid, so we need to, uh, we need to get all that out, and there's, there's pieces, and I don't know what that chunk, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think there's supposed to be like chunks. Is that a cotter pin? I, no, it's, I think, it's, I really think it's part of the drain plug. Cause it's like half round. No, it, it isn't metal, it, it, oh, it's it like crumbled. Yeah. yeah. It's like sediment or something. Right. I don't know, dinosaur bones. I thought I heard something click when you dropped that last piece in there though. Yeah, there's definitely some gunk. So we're gonna get this all cleaned out. We're gonna dump whatever's left in here. And we're gonna get that all cleaned out. Um, and then we can look up in the engine and see what we're messing with here. Go ahead, give it a, see if any of it will pour out. I don't know. Oh, there's a little bit in there. Yeah. Look, it does look like straight kerosene or something mixed with oil. Oh God. Clean your oil pans out. 
before you start your barn finds. <laughs> I'm lazy, but on a car like this, this could have been catastrophic. Especially because on these early cars, there is no screen. No, yeah, there's no screen in there. They figured that out a little later on, so. Definitely don't want that getting picked up and ground into the oil pump. It's just definitely. I don't know what that is, but it's not something I'd want in my oil pan. No. All right, so we got a bunch of work to just get this all soaked and, and may even get the power washer out, power wash the crap out of it. But we're gonna get all this stuff out and uh, we'll get this cleaned out and then we're gonna take a look at the engine under and see what it looks like. So we got the uh, got the engine halfway taken apart just to get the stupid distributor out. But uh, yeah, these things, this particular engine with that distributor, they're just a pain in the butt, and you have to take basically everything apart to get to them. So we got it out. We have another distributor. Really, the only difference is is that the coil that Mike had with the distributor that he is donating is that is a later. Uh, this, uh, coil that's on there. For now, we want to just get that in and get it running with that. If we decide to, you know, be that picky, we can put the original coil back on there. Um, but for now, we want to put a known working part on here, get the engine running, and then we can kind of just keep dressing things up and cleaning things and getting the car roadworthy as we work on it. Um, we have an oil pan gasket coming and some other parts that are that are on their way. We did figure out that this water pump is totally seized. The other one is free. So we're gonna take those water pumps off, see about maybe getting them rebuilt or get replacements, whatever. Maybe we could free that one up and it's okay. 
don't know. Um, but we'll be working on some of that stuff in the background and hopefully in our next video we can get the distributor on. We can just uh, get the thing to just fire and run just even for a brief second once we have the oil pan and the oil back on it. Make sure we have good oil pressure, all that stuff. And then we can keep moving forward. One thing we did notice when the car was up in the air, the other thing that we didn't really show or talk about a lot is we noticed that this actually had sealed power brand pistons in the engine and one of the rods had uh, like later castle nuts on it with uh, with cotter pins, whereas the rest of them had the like factory Ford castle lock nuts, which do not use a cotter pin. So we could tell that somebody's been inside this engine and rebuilt it or redid some of it because those sealed power pistons are obviously aftermarket. Not anything that was probably like a hop up. It was probably just that the engine was getting tired and she took it and had it serviced. That was a regular thing that probably, they didn't even pull the engine out of it. They probably just did it like right on the car, put it back together and it ran fine. So that's kind of interesting. Hopefully that means that the engine is, is a strong runner once we get together, other than doing the normal stuff like oil pan and cleaning the oil pump and you know rebuilding the carb, all that stuff. So we're gonna get some parts together, keep moving on this car and this will be a fun little one to break up some of the longer, more intensive projects we have going on and keep getting you guys videos three times a week. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you later.